Good evening. Uh, welcome to this Perrysburg City Council meeting for, we'll get the date right, May 4th, 2021. Uh, can we please have a call, uh, roll call, please? All righty, Ms. Bourne. Here. Mr. Kuhlman. Here. Ms. Maturney. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Smith. Here. Mr. Van Hoosen. Here. Mr. Weber. Here. Thank you. Can we everybody please uh, stand if you're able and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Minutes of the council meeting of April 20th, 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Everyone has received a copy of the April 20th, 2021 meeting minutes. Um, with that, I would like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the city council meeting held on April 2021 20, as written and to dispense with their reading. Second. Roll call, please. Okay, Ms. Warren. Yes. Yes. Mr. McCurdy. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yeah. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have no special reports, but any letters or citizen or citizens concerns? Seeing none, I'll go to the Ministry of Reports. Uh, first, I'd, I'd like to just uh, recognize that uh, uh, Toledo, that opening day for the butt hen, so I we'll want to say go hen and recognize all those that uh, serve behind the scenes or behind underneath masks on behalf of uh, making that a nice family event. So uh, please, we've been asked to make sure we comment about, making sure you come downtown to Toledo to enjoy the hens and that this summer. Unfortunately, as everybody knows, there was no minor league baseball in Toledo last year, but they're hoping to have a good year this year, uh, despite the Tigers current <laughs> as long as they be better than their uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'd also like to say at this point quickly, um, the city, as everybody knows, has been rebranding. We uh, have a new logo that we think provides an aesthetic look that's um, across the departments and divisions, strengthens our visual image and our uh, how we use that in social media and other things. And we think it also maintains the city's heritage. The next step of that is everyone knows our logo is the Commodore, which is right up here. Seal. The seal, I'm sorry, the seal. But as you also can see, it's not exactly the best design of the Commodore. So we are going to, um, the next phase of that is to reach out to the public and see if we can get some input on how best to update that to make it sure it still keeps Com Commodore Perry the nautical aspects that are important to this community, but also maybe looking at up, updating a little bit. We want to make sure that the Commodore is still part of the process, part of the core seal of the city, but maybe we can do something because as we went back and looked, nobody really knew when the seal was made, who made it, how it was trademarked, who got the copyright. It was none of, there were, so it's not that old, but nobody really um, had much information on it. So we're going to just kind of ask the public to see if we can get some input on that. And for example, regarding the seal, neither John Echo or Dave remembered when it was done. So that's how insignificant that those efforts were. So, because um, they are our institutional history. Uh, having nothing, uh, I have nothing else to report. City Administrator? No report. Finance Director? Well, I have no report. Um, I guess I should bring this up one more time. The summer schedule of council. I know there were some some concerns from the administration. There were some concerns about meeting overlaps, some committee meetings on July 27th. Um, I guess I'm looking for council, someone to either say yes or no, or, you know, let me know what you want to do. I, I don't have any better ideas at this point in order to... So to confirm that is July... 6th the 27th and then August 17th. 17th I'm okay with that if the rest of the council is if there's committee meetings so those can always be potentially moved I just yeah. have a question it's July 6th and 27th 
or you yes. Yeah. That's okay, so two in July and one in August right. is yes. what we're thinking about doing. And we're still keeping the two in June, correct? Yes. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Does that? I thought those were a go. I'm okay with it. If we need a motion, we can make a motion on it. I'm good with all three. Well, well, we just motion. adopt it as is. But we have to reschedule a committee somewhere, I think, down the. I think safety committee, and, and I'd suggest that we just move it up prior. To yes, safety. at night. Yeah, I think personnel committee is at night, too. Oh, it is? Uh, at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. right before safety. But I'm, I'm for scheduling that a different date if we need to. Agreed. I, I'm fine with that too, Corey. Okay, so I don't really need a motion. We probably could use a motion. It doesn't matter. I mean, if there's no. I'll make the motion to move forward with that council schedule for July and August. I'll second that. Discussion. Roll call. Okay, Ms. Warren. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Ms. Materni. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Thank you. So it is. That's all I have. And so it is. Law director, do you have any report? I have nothing to report. Thank you. President of Council. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a report, but I would like to make an announcement. We all received an email about a public hearing before the June 15th meeting regarding uh, the pool zoning. So I just wanted to make everyone aware that uh, June 15th will be uh, starting the meeting at 6.15 for the public hearing. And that is all. Okay. Uh, Finance and Economic Development Committee. Committee reports. Thank you. Uh, we, I have no report. And our next Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting is Tuesday, May 11th at 5.30. Uh, safety Committee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do not have a report. Our next scheduled meeting is... The 25th of May at 6 p.m. Thank you. Uh, Recreation Committee. No report, Mr. Mayor. Next meeting is going to be in May, obviously. Uh, second Tuesday, next Tuesday at 6.30. Thank you. My name's Owen. Uh, no report. We meet, <clears throat> excuse me, on May 12 at 5.30 p.m. Personnel. Okay, I have no reports since the last one we, we did cancel our uh, meeting that was scheduled for the end of April. And now I'm going to ask, I'm just realizing now I have a conflict with the May date as well, which I have not shared with our administration or law director, but if I could look for a new date other than I will be gone the 24th through the 30th on summer vacation, so... There are any good dates for the administration, or is that something I should tackle later in an email? You are going the week of the 24th? Yeah, I'll be gone uh, that whole week, the 24th through the 28th. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I will also be missing service if I'm sure they can go on without me, though. May 20th. May 20th. I'm sure I can make that work. What time would you like to schedule it through the date? Uh, is five o'clock okay? And does that date work? Yep. It does. Yeah. Twentieth okay. at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe that's the night we're gonna have. Is that the wage studies we're hoping to have back? Yes. Um. So I would. Uh, Suggest potentially other council members if you're interested in, in uh, reviewing that wage study and looking at the department heads. I've also had, uh, asked uh, our law director and administration to uh, look at legislation into uh, review of our, our mayoral and council wages along with that wage study. Uh, so I uh, wanted to let the public know so they could provide their input on that as well as other council members if you want to attend that meeting. And nothing further. Thank you. Public utilities. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the meeting was called, I do have a report here. Our meeting was called to order at 6.39 p.m. Uh, by Chairman Jonathan Smith. Committee members present were Jan McCurdy, Jonathan Smith, and Barry Van Hoosen. 
Also present were Kate Sandretto, Law Director, and Alex Gassi, Director of Public Utilities. First item on the agenda, we had a presentation from Lake Erie Waterkeepers with Dr. Earl Campbell, who was present to request the City Council pass a resolution asking that President Biden sign an executive order for federal management of Lake Erie. Dr. Campbell explained that in 2009, President Obama signed an executive order for Chesapeake Bay, and they are looking for something similar to that for Lake Erie. Dr. Campbell gave the committee the background information on the Chesapeake Bay project and on issues with Lake Erie. He stated that there was has been no effective repair of the problem affecting Lake Erie, which is why they would like an executive order. Mr. Uh, Smith and Mr. Van Hoosen said they, they would like to see the details of the executive order before they agree to support it. Uh, Dr. Campbell said that he does not have the executive order, but they would like to, to be similar to the Chesapeake Bay order. The committee thanked Dr. Campbell for coming to the meeting. Uh, Mr. Smith added that he is looking forward to hearing what T. McCaw has to say about the issue as well as it's going to be presented to them. Uh, the sewer credits tabulation. Ms. Gatcher reported that the only activity on the sewer credits since the last meeting was a recalculation of the previous approved credit, which resulted in a credit of $27.26. In other business, Mr. Smith asked that Ms. Gotsey let the committee know the number of overflow events year to date and for 2020. Ms. Gotsey said that they have a notification system and individuals can be added to the list. Mr. Van Hoosen suggested that the committee be updated quarterly. Uh, Ms. Materney asked about the city joining a COVID study through the wastewater treatment plant. Ms. Gotsey stated that it started in February and we were invited by the Ohio Department of Health. She said that it's paid for by the state and samples from raw effluent are taken from the wastewater treatment plant two times a week. The committee asked that Ms. Gossie send them the link for the results of the study. Ms. Gossie said that she would do that and she added there is a link on the city website. Mr. Smith stated that the study on the Fort Meigs Road ditch has been received and will be discussed at the next meeting. There being no further business, the meeting during 7.33 p.m. Um, as an update as well for the um, lake water or Lake Erie Waterkeeper, I did forward over a couple, uh, an email that I received from the Ohio EPA um, to our committee members uh, just a few moments before the meeting started. I received, I have called um, and spoken with the Ohio EPA and have messages out with a couple other entities at the state to, to find out um, what exactly the state is doing at this point. I know that uh, Governor DeWine has instituted a H2 Ohio uh, in 2019 and uh, set aside some significant funding to address this issue as well. So I'm waiting to speak with them to find out uh, what how this is proceeding with the state and we'll report back information as I receive that as well. Um, that being said, that is the end of my report. Thank you. Service committee. Service committee did meet. I have April 28th. President was uh, myself. Clark Coleman, Jam Attorney Jonathan Smith, also present was Bridget Cabot and Kate Cinderetto. Um We uh, kind of mixed up the agenda a little bit. And the first up was um, a lengthy discussion on the subject of the Starbucks project with various um, input from the public. I'm not gonna read it all, but it's in the minutes if you want to. Um, we also discussed the award of station number 38 improvements. Um, that will be coming before council. Um, and okay. got me to read everything. Yeah, we'll do the resolution. Okay. Okay. And we had a lengthy discussion about that. But Mrs. Ms. Sandretto stated that Ohio Revised Code nine. Point three one two provides de details about how determining the lowest, most responsive bid and the most responsible bidder. She said the bids were open for Fire Station 38 improvements. The lowest bidder was KCF's contracting with a bid including all three alternatives of $185,939. The next lowest bidder was Lathrop. Um, Ms. Sandretto presented credit reports for both bid bidders. Um, KS, KCS contracting's credit score is lower than Lathrop's, and they have several liens of their businesses. Lathrop does not. Ms. Sandretto also provide information about poor workmanship by KCS contracting on a, on a past project. Um, she played an audio recording of the Toledo City Council meeting uh, where the owner of KCS contracting stated that the issues would have been found by an inspector. Ms. Sandretto stated that the basis of this logic, the city would have to hire an inspector to present during the entire project and the additional costs 
would remove KCS contracting as the lowest bidder. She said that in her legal opinion, Lathrop has the most responsive bid and is the most responsible bidder. Ms. McTurney said that based on the liens and past performance, she would recommend Lathrop as her most responsive and most responsible. Mr. Coleman said the liens are troubling and as a layperson, he could see the workmanship in the pictures was not acceptable. He said that KCS contracting does not appear to be the most responsible. Mr. Smith asked about the bid forms and Ms. Sandretto said that they were prepared by the architect Munger and Munger Associates. There was a brief discussion about the consistency on bid forms for project projects. Mr. Smith said that he supports the recommendation of the, other, of the other council members. The committee agreed three to zero to move forward a resolution city council awarding the contract to Lathrop based on them being the most responsive and most responsible book better. Next item on the agenda was um, permission to purchase a 2022 Freightliner rear loader. And um, Ms. Sandra, Ms. Sandra, I know. <laughs> Call me Kate. <laughs> Kate, Ms. Ms. Sandretto requested permission to enter a contract with best equipment sales for the purchase of 2022 Freightliner M2106 Loadmaster 25 yard rear loading. Um, the committee agreed two to zero to four the town of the city council. Permission to purchase a Mobart shipper, Ms. Sandretto, requested permission to enter the contract to purchase a Mobart Eager Beaver model 1415 shipper to supplement the 2006 shipper, which is breaking down on a regular basis. The committee agreed two to zero for this on the city council. Um, board bid for 2021 resurfacing. It was two to one because uh, Councilman Corey had to leave early by that point. <clears throat> Ms. Sandretto reported that Harry Bergman Inc. was the lowest bidder on the construction portion of the 2021 resurfacing project. Um, and the committee agreed to two to zero to four the resolution on the city council. Other business. Mr. Smith called attention to the recent announcement about glass recycling. He said it's nice to see. He said that it is nice to see things moving forward with saving costs. There being no further business and meeting adjourned at 3 p.m. Respectfully submitted by Jamie Turney. Our next meeting is Wednesday, May 26, the 2020. 2021 at 5:30. Right before the meeting. Now, um, I have some legislation I'd like to bring forward. Okay, first one up. Um, resolution 34-2021. I would like to introduce it and move that the rules be suspended, allow for its reading by number and title only, and to dispense with the second third readings. Second. Roll call. Okay, Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Kuhlman. Yes. Ms. Maternity. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Resolution number 34, 2021. A resolution authorizing a purchase agreement with more barks for the purchase of one more bark eager beaver model number 1415 chipper for the Perrysburg Department of Public Service in an amount not to exceed $44,725.88. I move that resolution 34-2021 be passed. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Okay, Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Ms. Materney. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Kuhlman. Yes. Thank you. I would like to introduce resolution 35-2021 and move that the rules be suspended to allow for its reading by number and title only and to dispense with the second and third readings. Second. Roll call. Okay, Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Kuhlman. Yes. Ms. McCurney. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Resolution number 35, 2021. A resolution authorizing a purchase agreement with Best Equipment Sales for the purchase of one 2022 Freightliner M2106 Loadmaster 25-yard rear loader for the Perrysburg Department of Public Service in an amount not to exceed $190,566. I move that resolution 35-2021 be passed. Second. 
Discussion? Roll call. Okay, Ms. Materni. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. No. I'm sorry, did you Mr. say my name? Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kuhlman? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I would like to introduce resolution 36 2021 and move that the rules be suspended for a be suspended to allow for its reading by number and title only to dispense with the second third readings. Second. Roll call. Okay, Ms. Bourne. Yes. Mr. Kuhlman. Yes. Ms. Materni. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Resolution number 36, 2021. Authorizing an agreement with Henry Bergman Incorporated, the construction portion of the City of Perrysburg's 2021 resurfacing program in an amount not to exceed $1,475,571.50. I move that resolution 36-2021 be passed. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Hey, Mr. Kuhlman. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Ms. Warren. Yes. Ms. Materni. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. I would like to introduce resolution 37 2021 and move that the rules be suspended to allow the reading by number and title only and to dispense of the second. Second. Roll call. Hey, Ms. Bourne? Yes. Mr. Pullman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Resolution number 34 or 37, 2021, authorizing an agreement with Lathrop Company Incorporated for the construction portion of the City of Perrysburg's Fire Station Number 38 Improvement Project in an amount not to exceed $205,455. I move that resolution 37-2021 be passed. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Okay, Mr. Weber. I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Mayor. From a legal standpoint, I think we need to put on the record. Somebody needs to state on the record. All right, that's fine. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Go. Okay. This is a resolution awarding the base bid as well as the three alternative bids to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder for the construction portion of the City of Perrysburg's Fire Station Number 38 improvement project. KCS Contracting LLC submitted a base bid including three alternatives for a total of 185000 $939. The Lathrop Company Incorporated submitted a base bid including three alternative bids for a total of $205,455. The service committee met on April 28, 2021 and forwarded legislation to the City Council recommending the Lathrop Company as the lowest, most responsive and responsible bidder. For, from a legal perspective, this issue falls under Revised Code Section 9.312. We are looking for the lowest, most responsive, and most responsive and responsible bidder. The lowest bidder was, in fact, KCS Contracting. However, when it comes to the most responsible bidder, City Council is permitted to look at both finance and past performance, according to the Ohio Revised Code. Financially, you have in your packet the credit reports of both KCS Contracting and the Lathrop Company. You will find that KCS Contracting has a lower credit score than the Lathrop Company does, and you can take that into consideration. You will also find on those credit reports that KCS Contracting has multiple tax liens against the business that Lathrop Company does not have. You may take into consideration these financial matters. Past performance is important in these situations. The City Council should know that Park Brothers was the general contractor for the Andover Place Apartments in Toledo in late 2019, early 2020. KCS Contracting was hired as a subcontractor to do the rough framing job at the apartments. Park Brothers had to remove KCS Contracting as a subcontractor. In order to remove KCS Contracting, Park Brothers requested an inspection from the City of Toledo's Building and Inspection Division. The City of Toledo inspected the project and found numerous flaws in the workmanship. Attached to your packet, you will find photographic evidence of those numerous flaws. If you go to your packet, you will find that such mistakes as anchors that could be pulled out by hand. Those anchors are supposed to be secured, securing the wall to the floor and should not be able to be moved or removed by anybody 
particularly by an individual by hand. There were 43 missing screws. They were in, in improper placement and shut some sheet and some sheets of the flooring had only a few screws in them. The wall sheathing was not breaking on a stud as it should. It was a poor fit so you can see daylight through the wall sheathing and many of the sheets were not fastened correctly. And finally, I don't know if the floor anchor, the door with the wall in it is the worst, but the door on the, they put in a door that has a wall in the middle of the door so the door cannot be opened inward as it should. It would have to be opened outward. All of this workmanship was presented to the City of Toledo Council because the City of Toledo in early 2020 was considering whether or not they wanted to certify um, construction contracting companies. That issue has been tabled because of COVID, but this particular contractor had presented previously that he felt there was no need to certify contractors because everybody in the city was doing perfectly fine work. Then this inspection was done of his work proving that that was not true. His testimony was recorded at that city council meeting and we would like to play it for you now. And we will do our best here. Um, we're a little audio challenged at the moment. So you'll have to listen carefully. Uh, as everyone here knows, Keith Mahalski on KCS Contracting. I am the contractor that he's referring to at Andover. I am the contractor that spoke on Sunday morning. I am the contractor that didn't have fasteners in. And I am the one here to say that through the um, process of inspection, all those errors would have been found. I am the contractor that hasn't been on site since December or since um, uh, uh, Thanksgiving. I am the contractor that was running behind. I am the contractor that was told not to go back on site. I am the contractor that has a lien on a project for $140,000 for not being paid. There are two sides to every story. And the bottom line is here, through the inspection process, all these problems that I did would have been found. It doesn't matter if these guys are licensed or not. Those would have been found through inspection. There's two sides to every story here. I'm not going to hide behind mistakes. We do make mistakes. But again, we had six people in the process of doing detailing out what he's saying, putting in more fasteners in floors so there's not squeaky. When I was kicked off that job, we didn't even have stairs that could be built yet because the owner hadn't supplied them. So don't listen to one side of the story and take a few pictures from one job. Look at my whole body of work in three states. Please, just listen to both sides of the story. We've all made mistakes, but one mistake is for sure, or one thing is for sure. All those mistakes would have been found during the building inspection process because it wasn't done right. We do jobs right. There's not another job in Toledo that he can go to right now and say that we didn't do right. If anybody wants a list of about 100 jobs we do, did do right, including the Berdan building, I'll be happy to give them to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you could hear that. That was better than last time. <laughs> so given all of that, the committee would like you to consider that Lathrop is, in fact, the lowest, most responsive and responsible bidder for this project. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, the committee's effort on this as well. Uh, roll call. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Materni. Yes. Mr. Coolman. Yes. Ms. Bourne. Yes. And that is all I have. Good. Thank you. Uh, next meeting. Uh, May. Yeah. I already said. All right. Thank you. Twenty-six at five. Very good. Thank you. Uh, any other business come for this council? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have something I'd like to mention. Um, I think we all heard from Mr. Campbell at the last, last council meeting uh, from Lake Erie Water Keepers, and he was talking about a resolution about essentially cleaning our water, and I think that we need to take some action regarding that. Um, I've advocated for many years an initiative 
uh, should be done to end the process of uh, pollution of the Maumee River. And I fail to see why we're, we're not at least doing <coughs> something to do something about that. Uh, thank, I think the uh, Utilities Committee uh, said they were waiting for some guidance from uh, Team Cog on that issue. Team Cog's going to take it. Um, not just that, but we all received the actual copy of the executive order uh, yesterday. At least I received it yesterday as I was out of town all weekend. I don't know how many have had a chance to actually uh, read through that at this point. I have not been able to look through everything. Uh, as well as the other additional research that I want to see is I would like to see what the, the state's doing. Uh, versus what one entity is saying the state's doing. Uh, I know the state has been s sending significant funds um, as well before we would even look at uh, doing a resolution to support the federal government from taking over the lake at this time. I, I know the states have been working hard at this, uh, but I would like to, to see what the, those numbers are and where things are with them. From the conversation I had with the um, Ohio EPA, actually, about three hours ago and I got a call back from them is that they are definitely um, working on and monitoring and studying the tributaries as well as every other aspect of the Maumee River watershed as well as every other tributary that's going into the lake and uh, looking at finding out what the um, the phosphorus loads that are coming in and, and identifying what they can do as well as working in conjunction with the Ohio Ag uh, Department of Agriculture, um, the H2O or H2 Ohio uh, plan, which I mentioned earlier as well. Um, so I, I really wanna make sure we have everything before we just um, pass a resolution in support of an executive order that we don't have all the facts on. And I think that that is our due diligence as, as council members to make sure that we have as much information in front of us before we pass a resolution that could negatively affect us if, if that is truly the case. Uh, with this is, uh, well, just so how do you respect it? Fair, fair to say that this will continue to be in front of it, the Public Utilities Committee. Exactly. Yeah. Where, where is Team Cog with this? Uh, so I uh, actually um, received notification they have a Water Quality Council meeting on May 10th that is going to have this on the agenda that is available online. Um, I believe we all receive emails on those notifications. You can actually attend that. And I believe, and I'm looking at Bridget here to see if she, she knows, I think if I recall correctly from, I might, you weren't at the public utilities, were you? Uh, no. I think it was Kate. I it is May 10th. Is it May 10th? Because I thought the wastewater treatment um, committee or, or something was going to be reviewing that as well. I heard, I've, heard, I've heard a couple different dates, but the last date, most recent I got from Team McCall was May 10th. Could we double check with Team Cog and just, I mean, I, is there is there some sort of concern from the administration standpoint on passing this resolution, other than what John's saying about, you know, kind of asking the federal government to step in? Well, no, I, as a general premise, I think it's a good idea. The downside is in the details and the, the executive order that I just got had some issues that potentially we need to review. I mean, it's just one of them is how much control over certain things as goes there. So it seems to me it it's, makes sense to have TEMACOG, which is a nonpartisan regional uh, effort, and, and the chairman of that, um, uh, Tim Brown, is a very vocal advocate for environmental issues. And that seems like the best place to kind of sort through some of the technical parts of this, because that's what their job is. And then to have it come, it seems to me to have it come back to the community and then we can make a decision as to how, what kind of language we would like to have. I think it's a great idea in principle. There are some nuanced parts of it that I think we need to make sure we're careful about. So I think that's kind of what I think uh, my suggestion is. I haven't really been asked, but now that you're asking, that's my, okay. my thing. So we're not stalling a very, it's not being stalled because by the end of May, utilities would have met again. Team Kai will have met. We'll have some guidance on some bigger scales that we're not able to do our own due diligence about. Okay, I, I just wanted to ask. No, no, that no that's really be fair, because I, I, I haven't commented on it, so. Right, after talking with Dr. Campbell, I know one of his right. concerns was it just being tabled and not discussing Right, I don't, I don't think that's a, it, it, just to let everyone yeah. know as well, and I apologize for interrupting, but I just forwarded out the um, May 10th Water Quality Council meeting that has this on the agenda for everyone. Uh, there is a 
go to meeting link on there as well for you to be able to watch the proceedings as as they occur. Right, especially we get like from the administration's point of view, at least from the mayor's point of view, I think the great uh, Lake Erie is a huge resource that we have to make sure is healthy. Uh, I grew up on Avon, in Avon Lake in in the early not 60s when it wasn't, and uh, I remember being screamed at for going near the lake when I was a little boy. So by the time I was in high school, we were we could go in the lake. So I think it's a huge resource, and we have to make sure we take care of it. So. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, Dr. Campbell's uh, presentation is very persuasive, and we need to make sure we do our due diligence before we act, though. Perfect. As someone who sits on the Public Utilities Commission, I agree, I agree with what you guys are saying. Um, I, he did make a really good presentation, but he did not have anything for us to read, and I think it would be irresponsible of us as a committee to send something on a council when we don't have the hard copy of what we're supposed, you know, what we're supposed to be forwarding on. So this is the better way to go is let's see what the proposal is. Let's get the input from various agencies and go from there. As I recall, having attended the meeting as a bystander uh, about a week or so ago, there was mention about the, the Chesapeake Bay. The law director sent some of us that out to take a look at. So I think that's some of what he touched upon as I heard. Um, I do think that we need to clean up the mommy and not wait, not because we're looking at future generations, not just ours, but ours, people's grandchildren, as Dr. Campbell said, and what have you. And, and I would just like to add, being on the Public Utilities Committee as well, and a piece of information I'm, Dr. Campbell has piqued my interest on this a little bit, and is the federal court case before Judge Carr right now that's charging the United States EPA for lack of action that they were authorized to do in 2012. So I'm curious as to what the holdup is in that whole process because they have some authority that's been granted to them that is, there's no movement. So I, I would I need to do more, and we could all do more research on what actually is stopping the United States EPA from taking action as well. Well, I, guess, I appreciate that. that's an excellent point. Uh, it seems to me that this will stay before the Utilities Committee and then will not be buried in committee forever. <laughs> I don't intend to keep things in, in committee to die. I mean, we'll, we'll continue to have these further conversations as well, and there's a lot of information. I assure everyone in council, and I encourage everyone in council to reach out to the different entities within the state to have these conversations so we're all well educated. We could probably have presentations for hours and days and days on this, but I, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we do our due diligence individually as well. Very good. Any other business to come before? Oh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I actually talked. Mm -hmm.